Okay, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be starting a series which I'm probably just going to call Let's Code, kind of like a Minecraft Let's, Let's Play except instead of playing survival it's going to be creating data packs and things like that. So with this first episode I'm just going to show you how a really tiny aspect of a data pack is made and I'm going to be making an example item. So today it's going to be a throwable water block, so basically a snowball which you could throw and then when it lands it summons a water block right where it is. This is something that doesn't need a data pack to run, however it's going to be part of a data pack that I'm going to be using inside of a custom map. So it's just going to help you um, go along the path of creating larger, more advanced data packs. So we have to start somewhere and I want to start simple. So I started with the planning already. So basically what it's going to be is a snowball which has a tag on the item so that it could be identified with commands. And basically if the snowball hits a block, then I want it to place water. However, we can't just detect if snowball hits block because that's not an actual thing we could detect as far as I know. So what we first want to start with is the tag snowball. So in order to do a give command very simply without having to do the more complicated text for creating a custom name, what I'm going to do is open up MC Stacker and we're going to start with command blocks. We're not going to start in the data pack because it's always better to prototype with commands and there's some other tips that you should know including that tip which are listed inside of my video on all the tips that you could use while creating your data pack but anyway since we're gonna start with the command blocks we're just gonna go straight to MC stacker this is also one of the things I mentioned in that video it's a very very useful online tool for generating commands especially when the syntax is too complicated but anyway I'm gonna start with a give command just for um, summoning the item so I'm just going to go with snowball for the item and you can see it's right over here and I'll select snowball and so the only thing here is the syntax for selecting item custom item names is kind of complicated so it's easier to just use this for that so for that value I'm just gonna say throwable water that should be fine and then I could always change that later and then custom tags so here in custom tags this is something that can be detected with commands and makes it really easy but at the end of it you have to say water 1b or whatever you want to say this water could be anything but I'm just going to use water because it's easy for me to identify so now I, all I have to do is copy paste this command into minecraft and I should get a throwable water and if you don't know if you want to duplicate items into your inventory you middle click with the mouse button and you should get it. Now what you want to do is move on to the next section. So now I have the tag snowball. Now I have to be able to detect if it hits a block. So the way that I'm going to do this is that so basically how I want it to be is that if the snowball let's just use a snow block to represent it. I basically want to say so let's say it's traveling in this direction right the snowball boom it lands right there. So I want it to detect that it's about to collide and then since it knows it's about to collide I want it to then summon a water block right where it is. So in order to do that I could use these vector coordinates which basically do relative coordinates but based on where the object is facing. So what I want to do is basically if the blocks around it that it's about to collide into are not air then I want it to summon water right where it is. So I'm just going to do a repeat command on always active. So what I want to do is I want to execute a command if it detects that the block in front of it is not air. So what I want to do is I execute, I'll have a full video on the execute command but I want to do execute as and then all entities so this will run as all of these entities and then I want the type to be a snowball and I want it to have so remember earlier we gave it the we gave it the tag of 1b so the way that we select this and if you don't know how to select something to detect it what you want to do is try to get the entity data and this is also one of the tips in that data pack video which you should really check out so use, use slash data get entity and then I want to do all entities type equals snowball because I want to be able to know how to select um, I want to know how to select the 
and you have to put a limit. I want to know how to select that tag. And you have to put limit equals one. That's just how data get commands work. So I'm going to throw one of these in the air and then activate the, the command. Now we have all of the data on it. So in order to access all of this entity where it says snowball has the following entity data, I have to type nbt equals. So I do nbt equals and then two parentheses. Now I want to go in and find where I see water 1b. Now I see water 1b is right here. But I don't want to just type water 1b because if you'll notice if we go before that, water 1b is inside of item. See, you can see item here, and then it's within these two uh, brackets. So I have to first type item, colon, parentheses, and then water 1b. So it's nbt equals parentheses, item, colon, parentheses, and then water 1b. And now I want to make sure it's targeting it correctly, so I'll use the say command. This is also something in my data pack tips, so you should really go watch that video. Um, so we do run say hi. So now if I throw snowball in the air, oh, see, that's why I use the say command so that you can make sure it's actually working. Let's see, we're doing it as all snowballs with, okay, so there was another thing I missed. If you go into item, you'll notice there's another thing called tag in which water is inside. So I just forgot about this. It's item and then tag and then inside of tag, See, there's display, but that is, it's outside of these parentheses, so it's not display. So it's item, tag, and then water. So I just have to add, there we go. Okay, now if I do it, it should work. See, now as you'll notice, if I just type something in chat, until the snowball falls down, it's just going to keep spamming high, 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 which means we are correctly targeting the snowball. So now that we finish with the slash say command, we can continue. So now we want to use the location so I'm going to do a full execute video, but right now I'll just go ahead to execute as. Now we go at, so we want to execute from the position of the snowball. So at, at s means at whatever entity is currently running it, which because we said as at the entity, I'm as the entity, that means at s is now the snowball. So basically you're running as a snowball at the position of the snowball. Now we want to say unless, so we're going to set it to water unless the block that is in front of it so that's what you use these vector coordinates and then one on the very end then air oh you got to say unless block unless a block in front of it is air then run set block no wait we only want it to override air so I'm gonna use a fill command because you could use your place so fill the coordinates from its exact point and fill it with water and then replace air so now but the problem is that this will only set it if it's going exactly forward into a wall so if I put it right here see it summons water however the problem is if it's not going directly into the wall it's not going to detect anything in front of it but it's still going to disappear so if I throw it at a low angle it just disappears because it doesn't detect a non-water block I mean non-air block right in front of it because it's only not it's only not running if the block in front of it is air but since the block in front of it stays air until it dies it never actually places the water so I also want to have something that places it if the block under it is also air so what I want to do is basically do that same thing but then do it for the block under it so now if it if it goes over a block oh, there we go if it goes over a block it does that but now if at certain angles it's still not going to work like earlier I just got an angle that wasn't going to work so now I have to figure that out but first we have another problem so the problem is that if we throw it right on top of blocks let's see if I can get it it'll place many water sources because it detects non-air blocks under it. So in order to counter this, what I'm going to do is just have it so that on the first block that it places, it dies. So now we're going to have multiple commands. So now is the time I'm going to move it over to the data pack. So I'm going to go to the world saves folder and go over to data packs. 
and I have my data pack here, utility jump. I set it up just how like I set it up in my tutorial video for how to set up a data pack. So go check that out if you want to know how to set it up. But if you've got it set up, you can go over to functions and make sure your loop function is in there. So here is my loop function. So now I can move the commands right into this loop function. Okay, now I moved them right in. Now I'm going to save this. So in order to save the changes, you have to first save the file, which is Control S, Command S, whatever you're on. And then in game, you have to do slash reload. And then that, that message is from another data pack, Bling Edit, which is for Bling. But anyway, now if I destroy these, it should still work. Yep. And we still have that issue. So I'm going to have to do that workaround for the issue. I'm basically just going to change whatever run command is. So under the same conditions in which it would have placed a block of water, it would also have killed the snowball. So it's very simple, slash kill at s. s. Very simple. And I'm also going to label this. Since I'm going to be adding other stuff, I'm just going to call this section throwable water. And then this is going to be, what is this going to be? This is, actually, this doesn't need subsections because it's just a very simple pack. So now, now if I do it, you should see only one water block. Okay, so for some of the throws I was doing, the snowball still wasn't popping. So I was doing some more tests and I figured out that the reason, see if I do this, it's not popping. And so I was thinking it, the snowball looks like it's disappearing closer to me. You can see the particles are falling like right over here. So I was thinking maybe the snowball is dying before it gets close enough to the wall. So I did some tests and by setting the blocks 1.5 blocks in front of the snowball to air and so it looks like that's the reason it's getting destroyed before it can actually get close enough to trigger the thing. So what I have to do is just basically do the same things that I already have except instead of just doing one block I should also add 1.5 blocks and I'll keep doing that every time I see Every time I see the snowball not popping, I'll just add another distance and I'll just experiment just like how we did it just now. So I'll just add this and it should be working fine. And so it should be working, so I'll just keep testing it. Oh yeah, and something else I wanted to add is I wanted to add sound effects so that when this gets thrown, it doesn't just like place the water down without any sound. So what I want to do is I want to make a play sound command, so just slash play sound, and then I'm going to select the sound. So I already decided what sound I want, I'm going to use so there's a lot of different stuff, there's ambient block, and I'm just going to use entity. And then I'm going to do generic dot splash, because it's just a water sound, and then I'm just going to put it in the master channel. So that's basically, we got all these different sound areas, and master volume is just the simplest. So I'm just putting master, and then for all players, and I don't need the rest of it, so that should work. So... I'm going to paste that into here. So I'm just going to duplicate this and then insert this command and it should work just fine. So if I go after the run and just replace what's there with the play sound, then I do command S, go over to Minecraft reload it and it sh should make the noise there we go yep 
so that's it. So that's a very simple data pack that you didn't even need to use a data pack for. However, this is just one of the small steps in taking to create larger data packs in the future. So I have these products uh, projects lined up. So we have a jump gun, which basically boosts you up when you shoot it. A jump pack to launch you high. A, a jet pack to fly, obviously. A grapple hook, which you could sh uh, basically throw and then climb up. And then a deployable platform, which is something that you could just summon a platform in front of you or like throw a platform. And then goop, which is just a throwable slime block. It's gonna be basically the same as this, so I might not make a video on that. And a throwable water block, which we just did and is very simple. So. Things like the jetpack, jump pack, jump gun, and the grapple hook, those are probably, and the deployable platform, these are going to be a lot more complicated than this one. So stay tuned for the rest of the series, and also look forward to more complicated videos on specific commands like the execute command. So see you guys next time.